Hello and welcome to Clone Wars Conversations. I'm your host, James Arnold Taylor, also known as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Jedi Master Pro Cool. You know, one of the coolest things about the Clone Wars was not just that it was the last Star Wars made by George Lucas, but it introduced us to so many wonderful characters that are now a part of the universe indefinitely. And in season five, episodes two through five, we were introduced to a character that Clone Wars supervising director Dave Filoni has called perhaps the original rebel. Saw Gerrera was a tough customer the second he walked on the scene. And for those that have seen Rogue One, which is pretty much everyone, right? You know, he was even tougher all the way to the bitter end. But it was the Clone Wars that first gave us his tone, texture, and style. And that is thanks to so many behind the scenes, especially the man that brought his voice to life, giving him heart, ferocity, and emotion in a way that only he could, and allowing him to be set up as a crucial piece of the puzzle of the rebellion. Saw Gerrera is a character with demons, angst, but also pain and misfortune. And he's played perfectly by my guest today, an actor, musician, producer, and truly one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Andrew Cascino. Welcome to The Conversation. We are here with Andrew Cascino. Thank you for having me, sir. I, I'm so thrilled because, you know, we've been friends for so long and we've worked on so many different projects. But Star Wars was really kind of a special thing. Uh, and we're, we're the same age, which I did not know. I thought you were much younger than me. You're, you're, you're a devastatingly handsome young man. <clears throat> um, but uh, so you experienced Star Wars the same way I did then. Absolutely. It Absolutely. was a, a New Hope and Empire and Jedi and all of that. You grew up with them. Absolutely. And were you, uh, were you a fan of them? Did you play Star Wars as a kid and such? I mean, I, I'm unabashedly, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely I, I was, yeah. I mean, when I was coming up, um, my parents split <clears throat> and my mother did not have like a ton of money. Yeah, I, so, same, same thing for me. Right, exactly. And, and so when my mother was doing, um, she was working for some people and this was obviously after A New Hope had come out. Um, they, she brought home one day, she brought three Star Wars figures from this person's house and they were worn and you know one of them was vader but it was missing the vinyl cape <laughs> which was you know i mean that thing was gone 30 seconds after for the box <laughs> yeah. um and but i remember getting them and i remember feeling so connected to it despite the fact that it was from somebody else and yeah. it was worn it was mine and it was a connection to that to something that the, the mythology the tremendous mythology of it yeah. so you know not to imbue them with too much of a, a sort of like a you know almost like a talisman kind of strength <laughs> but to the extent that it was something that made me feel very much a part of that universe yeah so it was a really it had a very special kind of place in my heart and then one day you uh, audition. I'm assuming you audition. Most of us, we, we auditioned for this such, uh, kind of going, well, okay, it's a thing for Clone Wars. And Clone Wars had been out for a while because this was episode, you did four episodes in, in all. In the fifth season. In the fifth season. Yeah. So was this kind of like one of those things like, oh, I'm doing another Clone Wars audition. We'll see what happens. Or was it? Okay, so here's the thing. As you know, the auditions come out and they don't say Clone Wars. No. They say CW or a code name. Yeah. So I get the, the script and it says CW and there's no character name. It's Oh, really? No, yeah, it was mad undercover. Like it was wild, <laughs> mysterious. So I get the lines and they look incredible. Like there's nothing referencing anything. There's no character name, there's no environment, there's just no some dialogue. age, just dialogue, ah. right? So I think it's something for the CW network. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, whatever. And I quite literally read it like, yeah, uh, and I don't ever want to admit that I'm like, I dogged it out. Like I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. But I was like, I don't really know what to imbue this with. So I was kind of yeah. like, all right. So I just read it and kind of, I guess, leaned my own personality right. on it and got the job. But it was still kept as confidential. Right. So it wasn't until I showed up on the first day. Are you kidding me? 
that it's Clone Wars, and I'm like, oh, Clone Wars. Because <laughs> I'm looking around, I see D. Bradley Baker, and I see Ashley, and I'm like, okay, all right, roll with it. Don't yeah. act surprised. <laughs> I knew you, sure, I knew I was coming here. Of course, it's not a job for the CW. I knew that. <laughs> You know, so yeah, that was that was my introduction into it. And and on top of that, it was compounded because it was being in the room with you and everybody, everybody. who I have such tremendous admiration uh -huh. for. So being in a room with people who, you know, I'm honored, deeply honored to call colleagues. Sure, that's how I but feel. But then to have the momentous nature of what it was, I was like, uh, yeah, okay, new kid at school on the first day. All right. <laughs> and... And to, and to be clear also, people, uh, uh, the CW is, of course, that the Warner Brothers television network, the CW, that we're talking about, because I always think of that, too, the CW. Right, yeah. But then, but then all of a sudden you're in a room with uh, Dave Filoni, the supervising director, who is now schooling you on all things Star Wars, because that's what Dave did anytime people come in. Is he would, and I mean that in, in a good way. He would come in and go, let me just tell you where we're at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he got the whole... Dave had this amazing way of coming in, and he would give you a synopsis of everything. Yeah. But he would do it in a way where, because you know when someone relates a story, there's there's kind of a sterile sort of a way that they can yeah, say Yeah, I'm things. a terrible storyteller like that, actually. <laughs> so. um, yeah, I'm terrible too because I it's, you know, I can't usually tell stories without including multiple curse words. But <laughs> the he would come in and he would tell it in this, in, this extremely um, easy concise way yeah. where there was what I found was you immediately plugged into the emotional connection of what was going on right. so it wasn't sort of this kind of dry sterile linear you know these are the plot points this is what occurs it I wasn't just get a, moving yeah. right it wasn't a road map no. it was this is the current of the river for lack of a better metaphor Oh, that's a great, actually, you know, it's really great. And we've touched on it throughout in episodes of other, other episodes we've done here. But it really was, because I've always said for years that Clone Wars was a family. And it was a family, whether it was just, you know, Ashley, D, Matt, myself, Kat, you know, the smaller group, or all of the new characters that came in and people guest spawning. You felt as though it was a family. You know, you felt comfortable right off the bat. And Absolutely. I think I... I I'm trying to remember. Now you did uh, four episodes: A War on Two Fronts, Front Runners, The Soft War, and, and Tipping, Tipping Point. Point. Right. And I was in most or all of those, I believe. My first line was spoken to you. Oh, is that right? Oh, wait, no, second line. Second Sorry. line. Oh, okay. T t technically, first line was in a hologram. First line in person, <laughs> face to right. okay, face, yeah. was with you. But I rem and I remember us being in there doing all that stuff. But it's like there was already a family environment with you. And then your co-stars and Ashley and everything too. It felt already like because it was uh, Don. Don Lynn Gardner, yeah, playing Stila. Don. Now I got to take a minute and yeah, give, please and give Don Lynn Gardner the most respect because she not only from the character standpoint of Stila Guerrera. Yep. Uh, Don is killing it now on another program, Queen Sugar. Queen Sugar, and yes. And she's just puts on a clinic. Every, she is absolutely <laughs> tremendous, and I could not be happier for her. She is, yeah. and it was, you know, even that time, because we're, you know, we are like brother and sister, and, yeah. you know, we, do, we get along like that, and she's just a tremendous, amazing person and an incredible actor. Yeah. Just such an incredible actor, and what she gave to Stila Guerrera was the perfect counterpoint to what yeah. Saul was. Yeah, absolutely, and easy on the eyes, I should say, too. Well. As we say in the business, that's a technical term. But, um, and uh, <laughs> there was a, a direct connection that you pick up as a fan watching the show. They feel like brother and sister. They absolutely. Just, you know, and they needed to. And you, but, but with voiceover, sometimes you walk in, you get the script. I mean, because we get the scripts when you come in. There could be a kind of a awkwardness finding the place, finding the characters. That didn't happen. It was just very natural, and I loved that about what you guys did. Thank you. Um, and and like I said, it was very much a, a, uh, the the way that we just related because we knew each other. We're represented by the same agency. Oh, is that okay? So you, right. So we knew each other, and we'd already talked and stuff. So there was already a great degree of familiarity there. So okay. we were already kidding around like that. Yeah. And that was that energy that was 
necessary where I think it's a war on two fronts where yeah. there's an exchange between the two of us where it has to be very like fraternal like brother so, to sister yeah where absolutely. it's a bickering thing like yeah everything's going like left and we're arguing about what we're going to do with this piece of machinery and I'm like would you get off my back I yeah. got it and she's like <laughs> you know, so it, it there had to be that it had to be grounded and maintained in yeah. that in that presence in that place. Yeah. And that was what was uh, so much fun playing with her, which also made it so difficult when that when yeah. it, the scene when spoiler she, alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Are we? Yeah, because I know. I, are, th th are we assuming that I am <laughs> assuming that people that are watching this show have watched the Clone Wars. OK, OK, OK. So but I, I will say that. Just beforehand, in case you haven't, we're going to give away some things. But let's, that's why we're here. Okay. So okay. you're fine. Yes, please continue. Okay, didn't want to. No, you no, know, you're good. Continue. come out of that chair and yeah, start that, applying. A, no, no, that you know. moment is crucial. It's absolutely crucial because it's laden with so much emotional complexity. Yeah. Um, and obviously it was, it was such a tremendously powerful moment. Yeah. So, yeah, without having somebody not only who you know is an incredible actor but more importantly as you know from the multitude of situations that you've been in someone yeah. who you trust yeah absolutely um that's when you when really great things happen yeah yeah well great stuff happened you know um this character of saw Gerrera too would you have imagined that he'd kind of turn out to be somebody that now of course we've seen in you know rogue one and such as well and has this you know new life I remember the there was a I think it was a Entertainment Weekly article that came out when the trailers for Rogue One had come out. Yeah. And you knew that Forrest Whitaker was in the movie. Yeah. And I was kind of like, why? I I kind of think that I have a sense about this. This may, really? you know. So well, the sure, Force is strong with you, my friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, hmm. And when the article came out, that it was like he is Saw Gerrera. Yeah, I, I flipped. Yeah, I think the coolest thing about that was is because it gave so much credence to Clone Wars, you know, and, and to you and to your performance and to this character of that this is where this character came from. He came from Clone Wars, really. You know what I mean? It's like there's other stories about Saw and, and the fact that he's from there. And I don't know, do you know, have you ever heard this? Uh, there's a, a, a quote that Dave Filoni has said mm. that Saw is perhaps the original rebel. Yeah, I have heard him say that, um, and that was that was kind of what how because um, we we had a brief talk about that. Yeah, about how to approach him, and he started laughing, and he was like, because we go back and forth because he's a uh, everything the uh, Steelers and the whole bit. Oh yes, right. you guys are sports. Right. So you I'm guys a, talk. I know nothing about sports. So I... he found out I was a New York Giants fan, and that was <laughs> kind of it. But what he liked about it was I need that he was like I need that energy from him right. I need that energy of like the 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 brash um uh fearlessness yeah of him and the sense where he is kind of right on the edge of of being of that person who it's ride or die with him like right. you're either with him or you are utterly against him right um which of course the events in clone wars as you see it extrudes his personality out yeah. into this spot where if he was vacillating on that spot now by the time we see him in rogue one he's not yeah it's, it's not there it's, it's driven him to this this point where he is physically not complete metaphorically mentally also that's a visual metaphor for him mentally being yeah. and spiritually being not w a shadow of what he was because of the loss that he experienced right which Clone is yeah. which is entirely in um you know when you look back at it there's the he has the rocket launcher and yeah. he lets off the shot and there's that that momentary thing of you know i've done something fantastic in battle and by something by no means, or b through no effort of his own, completely by dumb luck, it ends up causing Steela's death. Yeah. So there's the guilt that he has to internalize. Yeah. And it's, it's a, that's why the whole thing with, with that arc is as much as it is about setting the course of the, the what is kind of like the, the beginnings, the origins 
of the rebellion. Yeah. It is as much about the personal, interpersonal relationships between those characters. Absolutely. Because they're, it, they're deep. They're all very, very deep. It is so important to the whole mix of Star Wars, what happened in Clone Wars. And obviously that's why people that watch the show feel that, we feel that. But I love the way you put all of that because it really does uh, sum it up beautifully. And, and you know, and, and Dave, yeah, he said, saw as perhaps the original rebel. He's the first one in a long line to be trained by Jedi to fight for themselves to save their planet during the Clone Wars. He's the beginning of what would eventually become the Rebel Alliance. So I don't know, I, I say that just to complete that thought for people that may not realize how important Saw is to the Rebel Alliance. That's really neat. And, and yeah, which is a tremendous honor to be part of the the arc and the lineage of that character and yeah. how he develops as a person. Um, I remember seeing, I went to the friends and family screening of Rogue, Rogue One. Oh yeah. And within the first 30 seconds, you hear his name and see him and I'm like, oh, he's gonna be in this movie. <laughs> like, I, I was like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was looking around like, forward, yeah. so, and then to see, and then when you hear, because you, you he's spoken of during the first, it, you know, 20 minutes of that yeah. movie, he's spoken of like this individual, this this being in the ether, yeah. this mythical person. Yeah. The way Mon Mothma says, like, where she gives that side eye, where she's like, you know, hey, listen, we're trying to do our thing, but, you know, Saw is kind of going ham on everybody. So, <laughs> you know, we had to kind of distance, you know, and and that, but you get that sense of, it builds and builds and builds to when you see him, you're like, oh, this is where he's ended up. Yeah. He has as much been isolated by everybody in the Alliance as it is a self-imposed isolation. Yeah, yeah. And can you uh, draw from that within your own life, this character? Do you feel, do you see connections? Like Obi-Wan obviously is, is the guy I'd always hoped to be, the wise Jedi that tries to do the right thing. And, fail sometimes but so did you see saw in yourself and likewise you know um i grew up around a lot of guys who were kind of had this sort of um a very binary way of viewing things yeah um and a lot of guys who you know had methods and means of conflict resolution i may not have agreed with or kind of used employed myself but you I saw a lot of that stuff firsthand. Yeah. And it's, in the abstract, it's easy to kind of discuss it. Yeah. When you see somebody who employs those methods as a means of dealing with just about everything, <laughs> it's, it, can be a, it can be a bumpy ride. Yeah. And to the extent that it, it informed a lot of what Saw was when I was when I was playing him, yeah, that's it cool. very much was the case because there are a lot of, you know, things where he's always giving Lux a hard time. Yeah. And he's always like, come on, you know, get her to get with it. Like he's like almost yanking him constantly. And he can't see past it. He cannot see past any of it. For yeah. him, there is, again, it's the ride or die thing. Like yeah. you're either working as hard as I am yeah. or I'm calling you out. Yeah. And that is... It's admirable to have that level of motivation. It's detrimental to have, to employ it in that manner. That's really well put, man. That's very cool. Um, and Lux, who will be in, we're going to be doing an episode with uh, Jason as well. Uh, that was a great dichotomy between these two characters. Oh, absolutely. So different from each other. Absolutely. And you guys were in the studio every time recording together, right? Yeah. And Jason Spizak. Yeah. yeah, and and. And the thing, you know, to, to touch on earlier what we were saying is with the interrelationship, as much as it, as it was about politically where it's going in the episode, yeah. there's Lux's relationship with Ahsoka. Yeah. But then you realize Lux kind of has, a real, you know, a thing with Steela. Steela. Yeah. And which also makes Saw kind of go, you yeah. know, and then there's a, that's why I think of the Onderon arc kind of like the arc of Side-Eye, because there's so many people who are kind of like, there's one great shot where Lux is saying something to Steela, and over his shoulder, you see Ahsoka, and Ahsoka's like, Yeah, I love Giving him, the, like, <laughs> exactly what are you saying, okay? So there's this messy, yeah, like, 
conflation of emotion that's going on wow. while there's a messy conflation of politics going on. And, and the, the two things are charging ahead yeah. where, you know, there's going to be incredible consequences. And they're all really young people and, and yeah. young in every sense. Yeah. And that's the, it's funny because I remember when we recorded these episodes, I felt kind of like the old Jedi sitting there watching. Again, like I mentioned, that there was already this kind of whole family thing there. And I remember feeling like, wow, this will be really interesting because I had got the script when I walked in the room. That's, mm. you know, I don't know, did you get your script a day before? No, I got it when I you walked, got it when in. walked in. And that's how it, by that point, by season five, there was really extremely rare that we would get a script beforehand. So, you know, you're reading through whatever you can and trying to figure it all out. And you, you got to the point where you're just like, when this comes out, I'll understand it all. But until then. <laughs> yeah. Which, gonna... and, and on an additional note, that was kind of what made it mildly terrifying uh, for me <laughs> was because I always had to bring a highlighter because I'm dyslexic. Oh, are you? So okay. I had to get the script and rifle through that thing at a high rate of speed ah. because I had to ensure that I was seeing it correctly. Okay. So I was kind of going on this whole thing of like, yeah, what's up? We'll talk in a second. You know, oh, and I'm man. lining everything out. And wow. that was, so that was kind of an additional thing to ensure that I was like, okay, let me make sure it's on point. I appreciate you bringing that up because again, most people that watch these shows are so interested in voice actors. They're so um, in love with what voice acting is and such. And there's a lot of people that might feel like maybe that's not for me if I, so, so you've dealt with dyslexia mm -hmm. and voice acting where most of your career you're walking in and reading things. Off the top. Yeah. How has that been? Has that been a... Like, do you, are, do you have tricks and things that you kind of... Well, the career I had in music... Yeah, um, which we're going to talk about as well. Okay, uh, was, you know, a lot of that was focusing on meter and timing and um, word placement and significance. Yeah. And all of those things helped to regulate something that was, uh, to that point, it was very difficult for me to to if I didn't have something because it was unstructured it became unstructured very very quickly right. so music was a way where it, it gave a very uh, firm set of rules yeah. that allowed me to then examine understand interpret and you know respond to things yeah. much more quickly right. so it was music was kind of the thing that informed all of that yeah so that definitely for me that is what assisted me so Often when I do read things, um, when I'm given things to read and it's, I'm given very little notices, I, it's almost like, for lack of a better way of understanding, is I'll hear it a meter in it. Yeah, you make it music. To that extent, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Well, let's talk about, so uh, you're from Canada. Yes. And uh, you have been a rapper then, right? A, mm -hmm. com a composer, a producer. Yeah, whole thing. Yeah. Uh, was music from day one something that you just were gravitated to, or? Um, you know, my sister was the one who actually had the the really good record collection. Really. Yeah. Um, and so my what brother. What was in that collection? What 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 did you grow up with? Thinking? She liked uh, a lot of stuff like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh yeah. And, See, and, I did too. Um, a lot of disco and stuff like that. My brothers were into more classic rock, well, what is now classic rock. Yeah. So, and then when you go back to the roots of hip hop, it's all a mix of that. It, it wasn't sure exclusively is. whatever. I mean, you would hear breaks from Steve Miller Band as often yeah. as you would hear things from, you know, uh, Donny Hathaway. Right. So, Donny Hathaway, by the way. Come on. I, come I on. literally, it's funny you say it because in my car right now, I've got, you know, his best stuff. But his yeah. voice. If you, do you have the live album? I don't have the live album. Oh, okay. The live album is arguably the best live album or one of the best live albums ever done. See, now we're, we're talking, well, now we're, we're two old guys sitting on the porch talking music here, but... Uh, Actually, I need, yeah, I gotta chase some young kids off. folks... Out. Where's the newspaper? I gotta roll it up and The kids chase that don't know Donny Hathaway, go to, go to iTunes. I mean, you wanna talk about, I mean, seriously, right? <laughs> Go to most. iTunes, check out Donny Hathaway, Earth, Wind & Fire, Stevie Wonder, uh -huh. Marvin Gaye, yeah. but also check out, you know, old Bruce Springsteen, check out Deep Purple, Black George Sabbath, Benson. you know, like there's just yeah. a million different things. Yeah. I can go on and on and on. But so, so music became this big part of your life then around what age? 
Uh, probably when I well when I was how old when I heard Rapper's Delight. Yeah. Probably like ten. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say ten or eleven. About that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it and it did. It's like Star Wars making an impression. It made that. It impression. was it was like Star Wars where an impression would be an understatement. Yeah. Star Wars was very much like you know, you, your brain just got reset. It was like a hard reset <laughs> and you great. saw the world differently. Yeah. And hip hop was very much the same thing where right. it was like, it, it was this entirely new thing. Wow. So yeah, it's strange. Even now that you mentioned it, it's like not quite exactly contemporaneous, but it is very, very close. Yeah. 77, yeah. 80, you know, yeah, around that time. There was so much, we take so much for granted in this world now technology, entertainment, and when we were kids, it was all happening. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of... And you had to, and this is the thing, you had to hear about it from, from yeah. somebody. So if you didn't have, it's gonna sound terrible. <laughs> if you didn't have cool friends who did cool stuff, you weren't hearing about nothing That's cool. That's right. You heard nothing. So yeah. you couldn't have whack friends, is what I'm saying. But, um, <laughs> but you, I mean, for real though, you, it, but even if, if, as it related to whether it was, a new Star Wars figure that came out, right. or whether it was a new record that came out, yep. you heard about it because somebody told you about it. That's right. Or you saw the commercial in real time because you had no DVR to rewind it. That's right. You were, and if you got up to get an extra bowl of cereal on Saturday morning <laughs> and you missed the commercial, the people was like, oh man, you missed it. Oh, it was the craziest. And you're yeah. like, <laughs> and you had to wait a week to, to see it to again. See it again. Because yeah. you were not allowed to watch TV See, late kids, at night. Be grateful for what you have. I'm That's telling right. you. <laughs> hey, let's talk about some of this other vocal work that you've You have been doing this for a long time, like myself. And uh, we've just had fun. Again, Spectacular Spider-Man. Now, Ben Diskin was just in, and yep. Ben was on that with yep. us. But That you was the first job we did together. Kenny Kong, it was the That's first right. thing we worked together on. That's right. And uh, Kenny Kong was, uh, he was, he wasn't a bad guy. He wasn't a bad guy. He was the guy who, who, he went along with what Flash did because yeah. it was convenient. Yeah. Um, and he was a big dude and he was kind of like, if I really felt like doing what I wanted to or calling Flash out, I could. But it's just morally convenient <laughs> for me to be, you know, where I'm at. Yeah. Plus yeah. they give me a jacket that actually fits. So <laughs> That's right. I liked Kenny though, but uh, and then but things started back. I'm looking back at like EverQuest two. Oh, that was the first. Yeah, that yeah, was the game. Was the first game uh, right? I, I blew my voice out on that game. That Did was, you I think, really? The first. If that wasn't the first, it was one of the first jobs ever. Yeah, uh, Lieutenant Fenwell. Yeah. Fenwell, uh, Froglock, Ghoul Assassin. Yeah. Um, Aquila. I couldn't tell you what the voices were for no, that. No, no. But, <laughs> but, but, but I do remember being like, I can't speak. Like, I'm writing things oh, out yeah. afterwards. There was a, a game, somebody actually just tweeted me. They said, I'm playing an old Spider-Man game where James Arnold Taylor says Electro. And this was, I mean, years ago. And that was the one time I completely blew my voice out screaming. Oh, man. Yeah, screaming every line, Spider-Man, I'm getting it. Was, oh, that's right. So yeah. They're just like, you know, but yeah, video games. But uh, Saints Row. Yeah, that was a lot Donnie. of fun. That was Donnie. That was a lot of fun. That was fun because it was it was um, it was cinematic. Yeah. So it was more, you know, because here's the thing. I should be honest with you. Not like everybody please, doesn't please. doesn't know. I've used the Jedi mind trick. Yeah, exactly. Honest. You're in my head. <laughs> um, uh, I've been asked on a couple of occasions when I've gone to voiceover gigs, and I've done a couple mocap gigs more recently, where people will say, "Forget everything you learned in acting school." And I'm looking at them like, that's not going to be a problem. Because <laughs> that is, yeah, okay. What, what were you going to say? Because I, I, don't, I don't have that background. For me, either. voiceover very much was a learn on the job thing. And the, the thing that gave me, I think, the ability to kind of hit the ground running yeah. was the fact that while I may not have had the acting experience, I had, I have had, to that point, I had decades of experience running a console, being in a yeah. control room, knowing a mic. Know, like I knew that aspect of it yep. inside out. That's and so I could great. flip anything over and build it and rebuild it from scratch. So that I can do. Yeah. But then what I would do is it, when we went, when we did Spider-Man, is we were in the room with John DiMaggio and yeah, and Phil Lamar yeah. and 
you know, all of these incredible talents. And the, it was like watching and learning on the job. So one of the things I th think you always know about me also, and that's also kind of a function of dyslexia, is I never sit down when I do stuff. Yeah, and I'll, I don't either. Yeah. yeah, I know that, and I know that about yeah. you. Is well, I always stand. But while I'm standing, I'm always watching everybody. Yes. Because I want to see, optimally, I've been given enough time to read the script to know the whole thing. Sure. So like football, it's like you got to know everybody's position and yours. Is I'm, I want to see how everybody, how, what they impart on that character yeah. to bring it to life. Mm. What angle they took, how they read something, whether it was with a degree of intimacy, whether it was explosive. Right. And I'm watching all that stuff and absorbing it and going, and then taking into account like, you know, well, what kind of person are they? Right. You know, and what is it about me that I can bring out in the same way? How do I apply that technique to what I do? No, that's brilliant of you. I, I find myself feeling like I'm always still the, the student. And I've been doing this, you know, 30 years and I still find myself the same. Stand, be at attention, watch through the glass with the director, give them your all and watch what everybody else is doing and learn, 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 James. People always ask, well, how do you do voiceover? Just watch and learn. I mean, I didn't take any formal class. I'm a high school dropout. I just, I knew what I wanted to do in my life and I, I watched other people that were experts do and then I tried to do what they did and there's a lot to be said for that. You have no idea how happy that makes me because I didn't go to college. I went straight out of high school and I started making records. Oh yeah. yeah so I was like, oh, oh man. Everybody's like, you know, man, I'm not putting my degree to use and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and tell everybody, your first record, the, the, the first big hit uh, was that the, you had a, a song Forgive me, my memory is blanking out because I'm staring at you. But it, <laughs> yeah, I rhymed the world in eighty days. That was the yeah. That was yeah. And how was that? Did, now, did you write that? I wrote that. I, I wrote the lyrics. Yeah, Peter and Anthony Davis wrote the music. Okay. Yeah. And that was that was big. What year was that? That that was ninety one. Ninety one. Ninety one. Wow. Yeah. The ability to make records in the first place, back when making records, yes. when you, as you were saying earlier, it's like, you know, you, you couldn't easily access everything, go to YouTube and instantly call stuff were up. Were you on, on tape? Were you on multi-track? It, well, it yeah, because I was, it was back then too. Synced two inch 16 Studer oh, you had, uh, tra with an Atari 1040 ST with yeah. Notator as the, as the software. So this is pre everything. See, what I love right now is we have our own little, like, all the Star Wars fans watching this can talk that with Star Wars, but now we're talking it oh. with tech. Yeah, that that was like the stuff. That was when, and that was, when, I mean, on the right on the cusp of cartoons were going to be recorded the same way, yeah. where you had to multi-track it, where it was like, that was it. You, there was no go back a thousand times no. and do it, because yeah. you had a threshold for how much that tape could absorb. Yeah. Um, and the tapes running at a certain speed would only have like 15 minutes. Yeah, I had, um, I just recently gave my uh, multi-track, I had an 8-track, Tascam 8-track, and an eight, uh, Tascam 2-track uh, that I finally gave up. Was it half inch or quarter inch 2-track? Uh, it was on the 2-track on the was a quarter. The 8-track the eight eight track. Track was, was... A 1-inch? Yeah, 1-inch. Oh. You should have called me. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's in the ether now. Can't lose what you never had. No. Okay. <laughs> but exactly of, uh, of that thing of like... Uh, uh, exactly like you said, I mean, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not incredibly grateful for the fact that to be as fortunate as I was to have made records, yeah. but then to do voiceover now, yeah. it's, it, it, I wonder sometimes, like I'm just so incredibly grateful because it is, it was the best thing that I could have got into after this. Yeah. So yeah, I absolutely operate from a place of constant gratitude about it. Um, but at the same time, like you said, it's the operate from a place of constant gratitude, but be as hungry as a rookie every single day when you walk in. Oh, that's a every great, single day. great piece of advice for everybody. And I hope you're listening, everyone, seriously, because this is great stuff. Um, yeah, and I could go down the list. Transformers, Jazz in Transformers. Mm -hmm. uh, Call of Duty, Tucker? That I don't recall. Okay. Uh, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. No, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm confusing it. SOCOM I did, uh, there was a lieutenant 
I can't remember his name. Yeah. It, I, I'm confusing the two, but yes, I do remember that name. Uh, G.I. Joe. Uh, Storm you've Shadow. Several, yeah, Storm Shadow. And Night Creeper in a, in a game. In one of the games, yeah. Uh, but in Saints Row 4, you played Donnie, but you also played Big Kish. They gave me a, they gave me a radio station, yeah. They gave me a radio station. So you got to be you. Yeah, I got to be me. Yeah, they said, <laughs> what kind of music you want? I said, what's your licensing budget? <laughs> I'm like, get me whatever. Like, I'll give you a list. And um, oh, Steve, the, the, he was writing the game. It, 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 he was so, so amazing about doing that. And he was just like, yeah, we got a script, but whatever you want to say. <laughs> and and he, we just cut it loose and just did it. So I was incredibly grateful to him. Oh, that had to be fun. And then uh, Kaijudo, we worked together on yep. that. You were lots of different masters and characters. Master Kimura. Yep, and who was like Kenny, huge yeah. dude. Yeah. And then I was... Um, you were Ken uh, Okamoto. Ken, the dad. And, yeah. and that he had sort of like a duality to him. Yeah, so. well, your voice, uh, you have a, a, a versatility in your voice to where you can play these kind of tough guys and stuff, but then also you can have this very kind of calm mellow warm kind of rounded tones you know I, I i see things in in sounds like that too and you can give this very kind of nice kind of you know this fatherly kind of voice which thank you um yeah that's a uh, I'm, I'm always like you were saying i'm always a strong proponent of the fact that and this is actually something i think that's attributed the quote is even attributed to you is there are a lot of people who you even see do YouTube videos or what have you. And I'm not trying to throw shade on people. Right. But they'll do great impressions. Or okay. they'll do a ton of voices. Yeah. But I, I'm actually, I'm certain it was you and I having this discussion um, mm. after uh, a Spider-Man session uh -huh. where you were telling me that it was, the voice is a sonic thing. Yeah. It's nothing without the character that fills it with color and life and inflates yeah. it, for lack of a better word, into a three-dimensional living thing. So there's yeah. tons of people who can impersonate anybody. Yeah, yeah. But then if you said, take that person in the middle of a gunfight of a bank being robbed <laughs> who's protecting a baby that has to get home because everybody thinks they, you know, they're living a dual life as a school teacher <laughs> or whatever, they can't do that because they can't step into those circumstances. Yeah, and wow. the emotion is what drives that, and that's something I've always picked up from you is oh, is wow. fill the emotional uh, like space first, yeah, and the voice if you know it well enough will just become a it will be natu that naturally hit, be that part, hits yeah. here. Oh. The voice like the the character starts here and here. It starts yeah. right in here and here, yeah. and that was the same thing to bring it full circle with Saw Guerrero, where it's yeah. like. You know, where I'm so grateful to Dave Filoni for was when he was like, what I see in you is what I want. I yeah. want that guy who, who, what I sense in you is that kind of thing of you've been doubted and you've been, you're looked at as in a certain way and you're constantly fighting against a certain impression. Ah. I want that in him because he is that guy. Right. He is that guy who is constantly feeling as though he has to like gorilla beat his chest to prove himself. Yeah. And that will naturally come out. That's why I saw very, sounds very much like I do. Right. But it was so much more critically important that he felt a certain way. Yeah. Oh, man. That's so great. You're, you're awesome. You're an awesome guest. We got to like have you come back. And That's only because the food was good and I stocked <laughs> up on that before I got in here. So I'm like fueled up and ready to go. <laughs> Hey, so speaking of Saw, you know, the way I like to kind of close these out is to have us revisit the characters mm. and uh, in various ways. And we've done Shakespeare, we've done movie lines and stuff. And I thought I'd go back to Shakespeare for Saw. And I was looking at, at characters that would naturally be a, a good uh, alignment to his character. And I thought Othello. And I saw Shakespeare's Othello. Now, I, I sent you the script beforehand, at least, which I tried to do better than we did on Clone Wars. But... You've taken a look. What do you think? Would you like to give a crack at uh, reading a little uh, Shakespeare as Saw Gerrera? Much like everything with the whole acting thing of saying, like, forget everything you learned in acting school. And I'm like, Psh, won't be a problem. I'm like, let's just dive in and, <laughs> and make it happen, Captain, because I'm like, <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, I was not a Shakespeare aficionado. OK. That's my disclaimer right now, just so we know. But I did read it, and what I did it is the scene with where he is 
It's the he, end. It's the end of it's the of end play where he's with, a, yeah. with his... Uh, and it's incredibly powerful. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, that I'd let that inform it. Well, this has been an incredibly powerful episode of Clone Wars Conversations with Andrew Cuscino, so why don't we end it the same way with Andrew and Saw Gerrera reading a bit of William Shakespeare. Enjoy. It is the cause. It is the cause. My soul. What? Who's smacking on the glass? <laughs> was... I'm in the middle of a fellow, man. What? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to do something serious here. <laughs> there was a noise out there. Okay. <laughs> It's the, it's, I have a chiropractor upstairs. Not for long, you don't. <laughs> Leave all that in, because we, be, we'll just start it like that, okay. and we'll just re-slate it. Go ahead. Shakespeare. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, my chaste stars. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow, as smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she be she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. But once I put out thy light, thou cunningst pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light renew. When I have plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It must needs wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Ah, balmy breath that dost almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more, one more. Be thus when thou art dead, and I will kill thee and love thee after. One more, and this the last. So sweet was ne'er so fatal. I must weep, but they are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly, it strikes where it doth love. She wakes. I should put like a big audience roar. Were they, I, I believe I read the words mostly in the right order. I think so. I think you did great, my friend. Wow, I've been blessed by Big Kish. This was a lot of fun. Always, always a pleasure to sit down with my buddy Andrew Cascino and talk Star Wars, tech, and well, so many other things. I think we could have our own show of just talking microphones and technology. We would have a great time. But I'm so glad that he joined me here for Clone Wars Conversations. I hope you would do the same next time. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. Please subscribe, please like these, and feel free to give comments and suggestions. I love getting all of your feedback, and I'm so glad you would join me for this episode of Clone Wars Conversations. Join me again next time.